But how about we go and chat about it with uh, with the man himself? Uh, hello there, Elephant. How are you doing? Hey, man. How's it going? I'm I'm fine. Good, good, good. How is your game going, first of all? How's my game going? Um, I forgot that the early game of Geo was just uh, being in an admin deficit until the 1490s. Yeah, that that seems to track with my experience as well. Yes. Um, hopefully going to be abusing the mages a little bit to get this core and cost a little cheaper, but that's about all I can do. Fair. How much have you got left to core, I, I wonder? Um, my core is just finished on... Uh, my, my territorial core is just finished on a lot of my stuff. Oof. So that's nice. Yeah, but otherwise... But you you want to upgrade everything to full states as well? Yeah, that's going to take a yeah. while. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so, how about you tell everyone what you work on in Anbana? Alrighty. Um, basically going to be a very similar spiel to the one I gave last year. Um, I'm Elefante. I am the Hales lead. Uh, alongside Karlov, my co-lead, he handles more of the raw hen side of things. I handle more of the uh, rest of Hales side of things. <laughs> Um, in general, I am the uh, code monkey that does all the stuff that no one else wants to do. If you see, if you've seen any UI stuff in the mod recently, that's that was all me. Nice. Um, the all the funny buttons on the racial menus and all that crap. That was the ruler race icons. Um, I'm planning on making a pop menu so that all the province modifiers you don't have to see all the pops in them. Instead, you see them in uh, dedicated little side menu in the province menu. That's oh, very what I'm cool. working on currently. Looking forward to that. Well, that, well, I say that's what I'm working on currently. My my time has been a little uh, a little uh, consumed a bit by the valley itself, or as we like to call it, Namsilhan. We do indeed like to say that word. Yes. Yes, Namsilhan. <laughs> um, wasn't my it wasn't my idea to call it that, but uh, that's what it's called. So we got to use it now. Fair enough. So, what it, is the what is the deal with this valley? All right. So. As, as I'm sure you're aware, this valley has been a meme for many, many years, because it yes. was pretty much the only thing in the old world that wasn't done. Yes. And uh, when I became lead, it also wasn't done. And was, there weren't any plans to get it done until... Or there weren't any uh, actionable plans to get it done until I sort of came along and decided that it was happening, and uh, no one else had a say in it. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. So, so, yeah. Yeah, go for it. Um... I guess, uh, if you want, I can sort of start from the beginning of what the heck this thing is and the lore behind it. Yeah, that would be great. All right. So, um, you know, Incia. Incia was the precursor playground uh, where they could do, like, biological experiments on a continental scale. Yep. Yes. The valley is like a mini version of that. Um, they There were some things that were a little too dangerous to do it even in Incia and would affect their other work in the gene temples and their uh, biological studies. So they had, to, they had to sequester it off into their own little uh, plateau that where they could um, do the more in-depth experiments that they could not otherwise do in a uh, less controlled environment. That's sort of what Incia is. Um, in 1444, the... Uh, that Namsulhan is the home of creatures and horrors that are present nowhere else on Holan. Some might say that they may even be of an alien origin. Oh, very interesting. Okay. Um, the one uncolonized province that you can see in Namsulhan at game start in that little dot in the middle over there is uh, one of the two precursor portals that are known to the races of Halan. Um, I believe the other one is known as the... Uh, it's in it's in the South Island here, that Gateway to Heaven or something or other. Oh, is um, that the one in the middle of Yesel Mora? Or... Uh, no, that is that is the... Uh, that is not a portal uh, in the middle of Yesel Mora. That is a... Uh, that's just a big tree. That's big tr Fair enough, yeah, big tree. Uh, I wasn't uh, aware... Did you say South Island here or South Sahel, by the way? Sorry. South Island here. Aha, uh -huh, okay. There, there is so essentially uh, there, there are two portals. One goes up, one goes down. Like we have the Temple of the Sky and the Temple of the Earth. This okay. is the Temple of the Earth. Most of it's underground. You can't really see it, but the part that's above ground it does very strange things. You can't access it in 1444, and I'm still coding the system that lets you access it. But once you do, uh, you may or may not be able to explore other terrestrial, extraterrestrial bodies. Even so, Anbana is going to space. Well, okay, Vicky 3 always planned for Aminar to go to space. Um, 
So in this one, we're just we're just getting there a little earlier. Okay. All right. So what kind of tags are we expecting to see in uh, Nomsilhan, and are they all going to be able to explore outer space? Anyone who gets to the valley and collects the keystones that are scattered throughout Gozengun will be able to access the portal. Okay. So this is simply a late game sort of mini game for if you want to do it, similar to Expedi Dwarvar Expeditions, except on a smaller scale, I'd say. Um, these these expeditions are only going to last a couple of years at most. Um, okay. And just in general, it is going to be a much... The idea behind the heavenly the heavenly portal is that you are... How should I put this? There is... It goes in one direction, which is designated by the keystone. However, if the planet is not aligned perfectly, that keystone doesn't take you where it normally goes. It points you in a direction. That direction does not change. Right. So at one time of year it takes you to the correct spot. If you do it at any other time of year, it sends you to outer space, meaning that you have that you go into the portal at, in, say, March, and you have until the next March to do whatever you want, but if you don't leave in March, you're now stuck there until the next March, and continue that on until suddenly you get overrun by alien fauna and you realize, hmm, maybe I should have taken the last March exit. That's a really cool concept. I, I like that. It is uh, risk versus reward. You can stay longer if you so choose, but um, you're not going to have a fun time if you overstay your welcome. That is a very, very interesting... I See, Anvana is is clearly got quite a lot of layers going on to it, right? Because on the surface, it's like, oh yeah, it's standard. You know, D and D fantasy, but then you've you've got going to other planets, which is like that's a that's an that's, extra layer. That's just completely normal. What are you talking about? I I know Spelljammer exists, but that's that's a, that's that's a different kind of campaign to what I'm used to. No, that's <laughs> uh yeah, no, that's very very cool. So yeah. I'd like to note that uh the other the other planet stuff that wasn't my idea. That's sort of been Jay's uh Jay's plan from the start, okay. as it were. So, uh, yeah, no, this is just... I actually didn't know about the other planet stuff until I had already started implementing the valley, and and I was like... and Apparently everyone knew about this except me. I was, this was just a pleasant surprise for me, I guess. <laughs> uh, so what was it like working on that kind of concept that, you know, you get into it, and then it's like, oh, by the way, what this thing that you've now got control of, uh, this is the concept we're thinking of, uh, go have fun. Like, what, what is that like? Oh no, it's 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 amazing. Um I'm definitely not a conceptual kind of guy. I'm the guy that if you give me a design, I'll give you the finished product a week later. However, that making that design is a pain for me. I'm very much not a designer. I'm much more a coder. I, I love coding for Ambinar. It is a wonderful experience all around. Um and it's what I'm good at. So uh it was very wonderful to have a, a team of people that were the opposite. They hated implementing, but they loved designing, and they were wonderful designers. So I had about six people. Uh, uh, okay, so the pe the people who implemented North Hales, including uh, Nam Suhan, we had about eight people. Uh, oh, we're paused? Okay. Uh, we had about eight people, uh, including me. Um, all very wonderful, talented people, everyone with a different area of expertise, and everyone um, with different skill sets. Uh, we had two individuals who were fantastic at implementing, me and Indy, and the other six were, again, they, 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 they did do a lot of implementing, but they more so took charge of the ideation and conceptual design and everything, and that's where I would have struggled, and I very much appreciate them handling all of that. Um, but no, everyone um, definitely, definitely l l lifted their own weights in that regard. Nice. What kind of tags are we going to be expecting to be able to play in this area then um all the tags you can see in 1444 are going to be playable um the non itself has two races in in it in 1444 you yeah. have eagle hobgoblins and the soul seeker ogres um if you want i can go into more detail on those guys sure yeah all right so 
Um, Eagle Hobgoblins are, um, you know how the command is woefully anti-magic? Yes. These guys are the opposite. Okay. So, um, you, so the, the command only really became anti-magic after they were sort of betrayed by the goblin shamans that, uh, oversaw them for quite a while. Right. Um, but, uh, in a world where they weren't betrayed, you suddenly have, um, you, you have the Eagle Hop Goblins. They split off from the command before the uh, shamans betrayed them. They've been up there for quite a while, for hundreds of years. And they are essentially the Hop Goblins if, um, if they essentially weren't betrayed. And okay. they are a very majorcratic society. Um, magic dictates uh, who rules and who doesn't. Religiously, they are they worship the fundamental forces of the universe, according to magical philosophy. Uh, time is one of their gods. Space is another one of their gods. The elements, etc. It's a very magic-based society. And overall, just... Um, a lot, a lot more individualistic than the command. That, that's not to say that it's individualistic by human standards. Goodness, no, these are hobgoblins. Right. But um, by hobgoblin standards, these guys are very much less um, less command. Right. And I think that's a wonderful uh, opportunity to explore essentially what what what's become hobgoblin. Um, Hobgoblin lore is so well fleshed out. Their language is probably the one I put in the most effort into. It's a very, it's a very unique perspective on how we approach world building. Um, because they they the, we have very few opportunities in E4 to explore the cultural impacts of empire on the world. Because okay. ty typically, what typically what happens in E4 is you conquer land and then you don't. If, if you're doing a world conquest, you don't convert that culture. Nothing happens to that culture. It's just sitting there as an un unaccepted culture slot for basically ever. Right. And with a command, suddenly you have you explore the concept of Wufyun humans and Wufyun Harmari, Wufyun half works, and it's. I'm not going to say it's all the concepts that we didn't want to explore elsewhere. It's that we didn't have the opportunity to explore elsewhere, and I really. I'm very humbled by that opportunity because it is Ambinar is in some ways a very liberating, uh, liberating environment. It's also a very uh, stifling environment, depending on the kind of person you are and the kind of stories you want to tell. Right. And the opportunity to tell the stories you want to tell doesn't come up very often in this setting. You have to pursue those opportunities, and that's sort of what the evil eagle hobgoblins are to me. That is what, um, in my opinion. I guess they, so, like in lore and to me myself, that's sort of what they represent. They represent an opportunity. They represent a, um, I guess, a freer society from that uh, command structure, as it were. I'm sure it doesn't. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure the metaphor speaks for itself. But, yeah, um, no, for sure. It must be very gratifying to get the opportunity to work on something that like speaks to you in that way, then. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I'm not even the main guy behind the Eagle Hobgoblins, as it were. We have we have uh, discipline um, specialties for each and every one of these races. Um, right. Rat and Indy are the main... Rat, Indy, and Everest. Um, Everest is actually playing in this death clash, are the three individuals that are mainly dealing with the uh, Eagle Hobgoblins, and uh, they have done an absolutely wonderful job. Uh, Robert Doge, uh your co-host, is actually... Um, uh, is actually the uh, one who's designing their religion mechanics, which are going to be entirely based on mage duels and um, and uh, procedurally getting better and better rulers. Get essentially, you're you're building up your legacy of your mages to pass on their um, skills and knowledge to the next generation, and guaranteeing better and better mage rulers over time. That's really cool. I like that concept. That's cool. Yeah, it's, he he came up with it entirely on his own. So I. I got. I got to give them props or props to you. For sure. For sure. Um, but no, I've I've talked enough about the eagle hobgoblins. I should probably <laughs> transition to the soul seeker, shouldn't I? Sure. Sure. Tell me about some ogres then. All right. So, um, right now we have two types of ogres in the mod. Uh, we have the uh, horned ogres, the oni, and we have the fat-eyed ogres, the uh, 
normal ogres that that pop in your mind when you think of them. Yeah. Um, and the fat hides, they so all ogres are universally uh, cursed with the hunger. They betray the giants, and the hunger is their punishment for that. Um, and that hunger is sort of all ogres have a different um, different uh, solution to the hunger, as it were. Um, yeah. The fat heights they choose to consume individuals to gain power to defeat the hunger that way. They just they they ravish uh, humans and eat them and obtain their power that way. The oni they take a they satisfy their spiritual hunger for power by consuming the chi of other living beings and the spirits. And that's one of the major reasons for the rending. Um, yeah. they, they, they flew too close to the sun and uh, tried to consume the chi of all the great spirits. And uh, the great spirits weren't too happy about that. No, as you, as you wouldn't be. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, so... Um, the Soul Seeker Ogres uh, decided to take a little bit of a different approach. They are descendants of, um, I believe, this. I, I'm not entirely sure which giants, and I know Wordness is watching this, so uh, he'll he'll beat me if I say the wrong ones, That's so I'm not going to say them. Um, no, they're descendants of one of the Halesi giants. Okay. Um, not the Hill Giants, I don't think. Um, they might be. Uh, but, um, yeah, no, they're descendants of giants, and they betrayed the giants, and so they, they migrated up through the Serpent's Fine Mountains and settled in the valley after having nowhere else to go. Um, okay. Because the Ogres were not looked upon well in Hales, and cer certainly the Oni were not willing to accept them. Um, but, yes. Uh, t in, in order to get into the valley, there are three main entrances. From the okay. west, from the Forbidden Plains, which is one of the easier entrances. However, it's guarded by Multi Lamask, uh, which is the ogre, I guess, stewards of the gate. Okay. They um, defend against the centaurs, and they're the reason that the centaurs haven't breached the valley yet. Um, okay. In the north, you have the um, dual peaks of Bazunezar, as well as the uh, Levijan Corridor which are both um, very, very easy entrances to get through. However, um, again, you see a lot of uh, political unification of the hobgoblins and ogres over there. So it's so the um, and aside from that, the northern border is one that they are relatively friendly with. It's one of the um, Runsuki monasteries. And in general, uh, the Runsuki aren't that um, they're, they're fairly friendly towards the inhabitants of the valley okay. as well I, I wouldn't say friendly is the right word but they are certainly not belligerent okay they're very peaceful people okay um uh, uh moving on from that um the third entrance is the god's wall which uh is the entrance that you used to see with the, the border you used to see of the valley with the command yeah and as you can see that connection has been cut off uh now it's based on the monument the god's wall and when you get to that monument to level three it creates a canal which is I well, it, it's it's more of a big staircase. You build a big staircase up, <laughs> um, right. and there are, there are magical wards, everything else that makes it much more difficult to get up. Yada yada, you get the idea. But um, yeah, uh, you build the, you build up the God's Wall, and uh, okay, you are able, you are right you're, yeah yeah you're able to get in that way. But the moment the rending starts, um, so are you aware of the Great Spirit Karaniana? Yes, that's the one from the river. Yes, the big fish. Yes. So, uh, you might not know this, but uh, the Karaniana River actually uh, goes up. The source of it is that lake that's in the valley. Oh, okay. So, uh, what happens when the full restraint of that river is released? Well, it explodes out of the Goswell and the Goswell is destroyed. So, the moment the rending hits, the Goswell goes down, is essentially what I'm trying to say. That's and you are able people. to get through. Okay, all right. I and, imagine there might yeah. be some elements of uh, devastation when that happens as well. Oh, absolutely. No, uh, though many provinces along the Upper Karaniana are going to get devastated due to that. But um, most of those will be owned by the command, so uh, you don't have to feel bad. <laughs> Fair enough. But um, yeah, in okay. general, that's how you get. That's how you get into the valley, and the the ogres uh, are not your typical. Uh, they're not your typical lads. They went in, they got into the valley by 
act, physically climbing over the Serpent Spine Mountains, a place that most pe- most creatures cannot even fathom going to. Right. Okay. So they didn't so, climb but, up the God's Wall. They just like straight up just went over the mountains themselves. Yes. Oh, that, they, yeah, okay. I. They're probably pretty strong then. Yeah. No, they're ogres. They are one of the biggest races in Ambinar. They do not have any problems uh, climbing over... Well, they, they... Okay. To say they didn't have problems isn't true. A lot of them died. Like, a lot <laughs> of them. Um, but no. They're... They... That, that's how they got it. And other races definitely could not recreate that. The the Eagle Hog Goblins got in uh, by using their magical prowess to sort of circumvent the God's Wall or go, I guess, over it. Okay. Levitation magic tends to do that. Mm, yes. Um... But yeah, it's not a place that uh, is that the command would see worth going or even see feasible going to until the running hits. Okay. But yeah, no, the Soulseeker Ogres, to continue what I was saying before, what, before I went on a tangent, their answer to the hunger is asket- uh, asceticism and, uh, I guess, contemplation and sort of depriving themselves of pleasure as a sort of penance for betraying the giants. Okay. Um, you you know they still do have the hunger and they do need to eat a ridiculous amount but instead of subsisting on things that would bring them pleasure like meat or t- other normal human foods instead they subsist on um essentially precursor bio weapons that are self-replicating like imagine a bunch of gray sludge that tastes terrible looks terrible however is uh very calorie dense. They just eat a lot of essentially self-replicating bioweapon. Okay. I mean, that's prob. Yeah, I, I, I can see how that wouldn't be the most tasty thing. It's not definitely not. No. Um, so that's sort of how they subsist and got to give it to them. Uh, I wouldn't be able to. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that's so when when the rending hits and this god's wall is destroyed what what kind of other than the command or whoever exists there at the time is now able to come in through the god's wall um other than that being an element they have to think about what else like how do they deal with that going on is there anything that happens to them when the god's wall comes down any kind of uh special event or or uh, change in their situation. All right. Well, uh, I'm so glad you asked this. This is a very fun answer, the question to answer. Um, the Eagle Hobgoblins are very in tune with their surroundings and their magical sides. And lo and behold, when their capital city is suddenly ap- approached by a big fish and they realize that the most powerful magical entity that they had ever witnessed before is... His essentially the fish's palace is their the lake that they've been using their entire lives. So, uh, a, a big political reorganization happens. Uh, the strongest mage is now big fish, and <laughs> Fair. um, and they you start you start to see the Karanian uh, the kingdom of Karaniana or the Karanian Federation. I forget what the exact name of it is, however, it is uh, the eagle hobgoblins reorganize under Karaniana itself. Okay, so a bit like uh, Bian Feng can have the, yeah, the dragon yeah, yeah. leading them. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's yeah. cool. And uh, you can, I, I, I can sort of see a tie-in for the rending uh, appeasement path. The rending doesn't really happen in the valley because there are no high temples up there to rend. Yeah. However, um, I can definitely see a tie-in for that. It's not done yet. Um, I haven't fully. I haven't fully implemented this. There's so much other stuff to do first. The, the early game isn't done. We'll so we'll think about the middle mid game when the early game's done. Yeah. Okay. That's that's cool. I like that. And what about the uh, the ogres? How do they react? Um, they're not necessarily. They don't necessarily care about what's going on on the outside. They more so want to hold in the valley and defend it. Okay. So their their entire shtick is that they don't really care. That. Okay. So. The ogres, they're, they're one of one of their themes is that they tame or capture what are essentially spirits in pokeballs, if that makes sense. Oh, they're yeah. called iron. They're called iron rates. They have spirit handlers that capture spirits, and 
I am not foolish enough to uh, claim that that is anything other than Pokemon. <laughs> no, 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 it's Pal World now. It's Pal Worlds now, yes. yes. Um, I guess that would be a better analogy considering uh, the uh, state of things, yes. <laughs> But yeah, no, they have. That's that's what their cavalry is. Uh, spirits that uh, are, I guess, in iron containers that they sort of they sort of imbue constructs with spirits, and that's how they fight with. That's how that that that's sort of their shock force, as it were. Okay. And they they unlock oh, yeah. those at level six, and they're. All of the ogres right now are tech five, which is <laughs> it's very honestly very irritating. Just, just guys, tech up one time for me, please. <laughs> uh, yeah. The just just in general, it is it is a little irritating for me that uh, ogres don't get any starting cap. However, um, it's kind of needed for balance reasons. I mean, most ogre tags can't afford cavalry, and they'll bankrupt themselves by trying to build it. That's true. So, there, there's a few reasons why we can't really give them full, real cavalry. Okay. At, at game start, anyways. Yeah, no, I mean, game balance is always something that is probably going to get in the way of, like, everyone's absolute imaginations on what things can uh, go on in Ember now, but still, still a good yeah. thing to have some balance going on. Um, yeah. But, yeah, no, the... What, I, I forgot the name of the region again. Nom, Nomsulan... Uh, you did it. I got it. I got there in the end. Um, yeah, this place looks sounds way more interesting than I thought I was gonna hear. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I have I have been working very hard in order to make it as interesting as possible. Well, I I'm looking forward to being able to play as as probably the hobgoblins is is what I'm mostly interested in. The idea of having you know mag magiocratic uh, rule plus. Just hobgoblins in general are a really cool race that you don't really get too much of. Um, Absolutely. The command is a cool tag, but it's far too big for um, playing in multiplayer, in my opinion. So I'd very much like to see... Uh, I, yeah, I don't yeah, want to no, play as a hobgoblin. Command, command is a world conquest tag. Yeah. Uh, multi uh, other players might not appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's... that's yeah, that's definitely, definitely. Uh, but no, that's that's really cool. Uh, thank you very much for uh, for explaining the valley to me. It is no problem at all. And there is a lot more going up uh, in North Hales. We have a few more uh, tags up there that I'm sure we can we'll get to another time. Uh, and I'm sure that you will have fun playing. But yeah. uh, I'm, I'm certain that I have held your attention <laughs> for more than long enough. I, I did hear that you had been uh, doing a lot of work on uh, o Oinakudi. Oh, wait, who told you that? Hang on. There, there was, there was a, there was a chat invasion. Uh, I can't remember who it was that said that, but I was told oh. uh, pre-game that uh, you'd you'd done quite a lot of work there. Uh yeah, no, I definitely have, and um, uh, I was pulling me, wasn't it? I bet it was him. Um, it's definitely a lot. Uh, there's definitely a lot of stuff going up there that I am super happy to show you. Uh, I'm just gonna leave. I'm just gonna leave you with three words: Troll Genghis Khan. Goodbye. Have a nice day. <laughs> Troll Genghis Khan sounds pretty fantastic. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure. I will see you all another time and go play the valley. See you guys. Bye bye. Thank you very much for coming to chat with me. Appreciate it. Uh, okay. So the last time that I spoke to ne uh, to Elephant was the last time we had the Dev Clash uh, about a year ago, and when I spoke to him, I was asking, really quite pleadingly, uh, if we could have some um, Drow in the Valley. I feel like I'm not disappointed that there are no Drow. This this is all really cool stuff. So yeah, Ellie is uh, done a done a great job. Um, explaining this to me, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to uh, seeing what uh, what comes of this. Uh, I will be playing as Kunan Neroku. Uh, cool name, love it. You think Drow is banned? Drow is definitely banned. I I'm I was aware when I begged for it, uh, but it didn't stop me because I am an Drow uh, enjoyer. Let's say. <laughs>